if it measures better, does it sound better? If it is more expensive, is it better? Now these two questions can start a war in, for, in audio forums, and the reason I'm asking this question is because I happen to run into this situation. On the left corner, I have the SMSL D1SE, Delta Sigma DAC, that measures excellent. While on the right corner, I have the horribly measured SMSL R2R D3 DAC that costs 3,500 USD. So if I go by measurements, the D1SE should smoke the D3, even if it is more expensive, right? Recently, Hi-Fi Express, which is partially owned by SMSL, reached out to me and offered me to review the D3. Now, for those of you who don't follow me, you know, I, I hate reviewing DAX. But I was really curious about the D3 because it is SMSL's first attempt at an R2R DAC. Now, just before I receive it, I saw Audio Science review on the D3 and it measured badly. This is a bit shocking for me because, you know, as you know, all SMSL products produce textbook measurements. Now, I don't want to start a debate on measurements versus subjective listening because it is pointless. In the sense, we have all made up our minds where we stand and a debate will go nowhere. Now, although I stand in the camp of giving priority to my years over measurements, I fully respect and thank what measurements have brought us. Okay, so guys, please not, let's not argue about it. Now, given SMSL D3's relatively bad measurements, I say relatively because in reality, it's not that bad. Come on, THD of 0.001%, SNR of 112 dB. Man, we're, we're too spoiled with fantastic measurements. This is considered unacceptable? Anyways, I reached out to SMSL asking them, hey man, you built your company on excelling in measurements and your flagship measured the worst? What is that about? So Hi-Fi Express replied to me and let me put it here on the screen. And I'll use a translation software to translate it. Now in short, it is all about the sound. Well, of course, some of you might argue, Thomas, what else can they say? Our engineers were smoking weed when they were designing the D3, so that is why we got what we got. Okay, I will say this. The DAC does sound good, but at 3,500 USD, how does it compare to the $700 D1SE? As you know, I try to be as objective as possible, and I was curious about which DAC will people choose in a blind test. So I created a YouTube sound demo and posted it on my community page. And here are the results. A is the SMSL D1SE DAC that measured really well, 720 bucks. B is the SMSL D3 DAC that costs 3,500 bucks. Interesting, isn't it? Pretty much a tie. So today, my audio buddies, let's talk about the SMSL D3 R2R DAC. Guys, if you appreciate what I do and would like to indirectly support the channel, please make sure you use Hi-Fi Express for all your SMSL purchases. Now, usually my arrangements with online stores are I keep whatever I review. However, this time, SMSL told me, Thomas, man, sorry, the deck is too bloody expensive. We cannot give it to you for free. Well, that sucks for me because it takes me weeks of bringing around to my audio buddies, days of listening, shooting, editing, and it's going to be free work. But I say, sure, I will review it because the audio file in me is curious. I wanted to know how the most expensive deck from SMSL would sound and the fact that it is R2R. You know, if, it, if it weren't R2R, I would say forget it. At least they would give me a better price if I, decide, if I decided to buy it. The point of all this is I simply want to be transparent. Now, the SMSL VMV D3 uses an out of production PCM1704 chip, which is why I was told they can only build a limited number of them. The power supply and the motherboards are in two separate chassis to minimize interference. Different than all other SMSL DACs, you can use an external clock if you want to. Also, unlike all other SMSL DACs, you cannot use this as a preamp as it does not have a volume control. The manual suggests you to use the eight times over sample settings, and I wish I could disable that. 
Now, I would not go through the rest of the specs because you can find all those info on their website. So how does it sound? Top end is detailed, extended and transparent. Now, given I can use the same description for the top end for the D1 SE, why don't I just highlight what I hear the difference between the D1 SE and the D3 instead, specifically for the top end and mid range. So although both DACs are really detailed, the D3 has a bit softer edges. So to my audio buddies and me, it sounded more analog. Next, the mid-range, the D1SE is more forward. As a result, the singer with the D1SE is standing more in front, while with the D3 is more behind within the soundstage. The bass, let me compare it to the Denifert Venus and Pontus R2R DAC instead. The D3 bass is more elevated punchy and it reminds me of the SMSL M400 bass. So although you can argue the D3 is relatively neutral, it is more colored when compared to the Denafrit. So yes, you have a slight mild V curve relatively speaking. The D3 is what I consider a fun DAC. Some slight exaggeration which makes the presentation more exciting. For the sound stage, well the D3 excels at it and that is what R2R is about. And yes, the airiness, the width, depth in the soundstage is fantastic. Instrument separation and placement are audiophile level. Now, where both the D1SE and the D3 differ in the soundstage is that the D1SE is more precise. Center image is more solid, while the D3 has a bigger sense of air and space, and the decay is more extended, with the D3, which feels like there is an extra layer of reverb. And I noticed that also with the Denafrem. Maybe that is what makes R2R deck so good with soundstage. Now, let's start with the negatives. The bass is a double-edged sword. In some systems, the elevated bass bleeds into the mid-range and it can be too much of a good thing. So, very important system matching. For those of you who wish to have a bit more bass, well, here you go. Next, the mid-range, as I said, is a bit lay back. So for those of you who like that full fat syrupy warm forward mid-range, yeah this may not be what you're looking for. Next, as I mentioned before, the center image and precision can be better. I mean come on, even the semi-affordable D1 SE has a better center image. Denis, my audio buddy, actually prefers the D1 SE because of this. It has better precision and it feels the D1 SE can play a bigger variety of music. So let's move on to the positives and let's try to justify its $3,500 asking price. I know some of you are thinking, Thomas, nothing you say can convince me that it's worth $3,500 even if it can make coffee in the morning. To help me evaluate this unit, I have my audio buddies, Loic, Mr. Jazz, Mr. Vintage, Mr. Quad, Mr. Kanta and Denise test it for me. Mr. Vintage gave it high marks because it reminded him of a rail-to-rail -rail tape while the Denifrit reminded him of vinyl. Both R2R DAC sounded more analog than all the entry-level DAC we have been testing. And yeah, I have to say yes. You see, the D3 does have less edginess in the mid-range. And I know in the sound demo I share, not everyone felt that. But in my room here, I do find it has way less mid-range glare. And let me tell you a story. So at the Montreal Auto Show, I got a chance to listen to the Apertura Edena Evolution speakers behind me here. See? I really liked it and after the show they dropped it off at my place. Now interestingly, when I tried it at my home with the Macintosh MAC6700, I felt that it was just okay. My biggest issue with it is with that ribbon tweeter, not that it's harsh or bright, but I guess the best way to describe it is it's a little bit hot, a bit too much energy and I remember it sounded better at the show than at my place. Now perhaps a bad match with Macintosh. Part of the reason I'm delaying the launch of my Galleon TS120 amp is because of these speakers. Now, although I would give the combo TS120 and Apertura a higher grade than I would give the Macintosh 670 and the Apertura, the top end is still slightly hot. That's why I'm asking Doge to fine tune the TS120. So while waiting for my new amp, I call up all my audio buddies and ask them to bring over their amps. I borrowed a Hego H300, which sounded really good with the Apertura. I then borrowed this DIY Class A amp from Mr. Amplifier. Now, this is probably one of the best Class A amp I've ever heard. And I hate to admit it, but with the Maggie 1.7i, this Class A amp sounds better than the Galleon. 
Now, another reason why I'm delaying the launch. Now, sadly, this Class A amp is an amp most people in the world will never get a chance to listen to because it is DIY. Now, I would say if it were to be commercialized, it would sell for probably at least 25,000 US. Now, the clarity and fluidity of this amplifier is just world class. Now, I'm still not sure if it's a good match with the Edena because incredible clarity and a ribbon with a lot of resolution, yeah, it's not necessarily the best match. However, with the D3, I can enjoy the combo, while with the D1SE, that slight extra glare bothers me. I guess when you have a system of this caliber, like super resolving, yeah, little differences get exaggerated. I never thought, once thought the D1SE is not analog sounding, but when I A-B test it against the D3, yeah, it does sound more digital. Interestingly, the gap is not as big when I test it on the Q Acoustic Concept 500, and I guess partially it's because the Concept 500 is a smooth sounding speaker to start off with. Next, the soundstage, airiness, and extended decay do give the D3 an edge compared to the more entry-level DAX. Even if Denis prefer the D1SE, he has to give it to the D3 when it comes to orchestra. The ability to create that extra sense of space and dimension is quite impressive. Remember I said the singer feels a bit more behind? Well, you know, it creates more depth in the soundstage. The layering is better. Of course, you know, your speakers have to be at least four to five feet away from the front wall to get that depth. But if your speakers are properly set up, the D3 will excel in this. Finally, I'd like to emphasize again that extended decay and reverb. Now, it might be 0.1 milliseconds more, but it gives a sense of space around the singer and instruments. Now, all my audio buddies that find a D3 sounded really good before they look at the price. So, let's wrap it up. So, is the difference in the soundstage and the fact it sounds more analog worth the 2,700 USD difference? Well, obviously, it depends on you. However, I would say though, the poll with the blind test is quite interesting. From my experience, gear that has more fireworks tend to do better in sound demos, especially sharper top end. Perhaps that is why when I sent it to Mr. Cantor, I'm not Mr. Vintage, the sound demo, he replied with A, well, which is the D1SE, is good for short-term listening, and B, which is the D3, is good for long-term listening. No, but Mr. Just said the D1SE bass is better in the sound demo, but in real life, he prefers the D3. Now, for those of you who have chosen A, congratulations, you have saved yourself 2,700 bucks. Now, for those of you who have chosen B, well, watching Thomas in stereo can be dangerous for your wallet. So regardless, if the D3 truly sucked because it measured bad, then you would have expected the pole to heavily lean towards the D1SE. Now, of course, with a sound demo with YouTube compression, the test is meaningless and it's mainly for entertainment purpose. After all, if you look at the comments from the sound demo, it is all over the place. Now, at the same time, the test uh, does agree with what I have always said. Once things reach a certain level, good enough level, it's all a question of taste and synergy. I see some people there think that, you know, in hi-fi there's absolute, right? For example, there's the best preamp in the world. I mean, sorry man, not in my book. You know what? I'm going to make a mug. I'm going to print that on the mug. In hi-fi, it's all a question of taste. Well, assuming both gear are around the same level. Now, in my case, I've decided to buy the SMSL D3 DAC because the extra level of decay and sense of space is what I value most in my system. Now, some people's priority may be tone, but in my case, it is the sound stage. That is why my speakers are pulled out a lot from the front wall. Now, I'm still on my journey to get these bloody Apertura to sound good, and I have a feeling I would need the help of this SMSL D3 DAC to achieve that. The Apertura does sound good. But these are $15,000 speakers. I need it to sound heavenly. And I'm still working on that. All right, guys. See you next time.
I stand alone.